Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about Neurobiology of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only, not for clinical opinion. For clinical opinion, please do contact a psychiatrist. Conflict of interest? None. In this video, I am going to discuss about the biological basis of cognitive behavioral therapy. What are the brain changes noted after cognitive behavioral therapy? That will be discussed in this video. This video is targeted to psychiatrists, doctors, nurses working in the field of mental health and also mental health professionals, psychotherapists and counsellors. In this video, I am going to discuss in three parts. First, CBT and brain changes, whether it is a myth or reality. The second one is CBT changes the brain in various psychiatric illnesses, whether it is same or different. And the third one, CBT comparing with other psychiatric treatment modalities such as ECT, antidepressant. So these are the three important divisions which I have made in this presentation. First and the foremost, CBT, whether it causes brain changes or not. The earliest hypothesis which was proposed that psychotherapy acts through prefrontal cortex. That is, we perceive the environment, we scan the environment and also we interpret the environment through prefrontal lobe and through prefrontal lobe the changes occurs across the brain. Hence it was considered as top-down approach. Whereas SSRI, that is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, they act through bottom-up approach, that is through the midbrain and pons where dorsal raphenuclei is situated. Look at this diagram. You can see the prefrontal cortex projection is seen across the brain. They receive and also they send various signals and information to various parts of the brain. And CBT acts from top down approach was the hypothesis. And the second one was bottom up approach. You can see the dorsal raphae nuclei which is situated in the midbrain and pons which throws the projection across the brain. And again here it was considered as bottom up approach. Unfortunately. This was the dichotomy proposed by the people who believed the medication is only the biological basis of treatment and CBT is a psychological basis of treatment. That means the brain changes occurs only through medication and CBT did not cause any change. It is just a psychological treatment. That was the hypothesis. Hence, this unfortunate dichotomy played a major role in acceptance of CBT as a treatment for various medical disorders because there was a psychological basis of treatment and biological basis of treatment. This was an unfortunate uh, dichotomy which ran for many years. But however, slowly we are able to understand both the medication and cognitive behavioral therapy bring in certain changes in the brain. And that is what we are going to discuss in this study or in this video. During the past several decades, it has been made very clear that mental processes drive from the mechanism of the brain. That means nothing comes out of zero. The brain has to change, which will be constantly interacting with the environment. As the environment is perceived as a threat or is safe, the human is going to interact with the environment. And newer technologies such as functional neuroimaging, CT SPECT, PET, fMRI, MRI study, genetic study, humanocommunical study, Various other different technologies have brought in a window of opportunity to know the changes pre-CBT and post-CBT in a similar individual or in identical individuals. That means studies were conducted using these technologies before CBT and after conducting CBT, what are the brain changes has occurred. Not only that, they also studied various, uh, considering the uh, control group also was taken and these studies I am going to review now. The most early part was in 1990. Baxter and his colleagues used PET study to show that the people who responded to CBT for OCD are, were similar to responder to SRI, SSRIs and they found that there was a reduced resting metabolic rate of glucose in the striatum. That means this study was the opening of the new floodgates where many studies came in later. That means this study clearly said that SSRI and CBT produced similar changes in the brain. Now let's understand about cognitive behavioral therapy and depression. That is, in depressive patients, if cognitive behavioral therapy is done, what are the changes which are seen in the brain? 
there was a systematic review of 10 studies, which was done by Franklin and his colleagues. They did a study and they found that the 10 studies were included in their meta-analysis. There were 5 fMRI studies, 3 PET studies, 1 SPECT and 1 MRS. Although these studies were heterogeneate and there were, but however, the methodology may be different and also the inclusion and exclusion criteria were different. However, it was very difficult to compare the studies, but they were able to come to certain conclusions. These are the conclusions. They said that CBT associated changes were noted in anterior cingulate cortex, posterior cingulate cortex, ventromedial medial prefrontal cortex, orbitofrontal cortex, amygdala and hippocampus. This was an important finding from this meta-analysis. Further, CBT and anxiety disorders in children. Whether CBT brings in changes only in adult, does it bring in children also? That was the aim of the study. Here, CBT and anxiety disorder in children, they looked at the serotonin transporter DNA methylation and response to pre and post CBT in children of a sample size of 116. And this study was one of the landmark study according to me. In this study, they found that responder to CBT had an increase in DNA methylation, whereas non-responder showed a decrease in DNA methylation. This was a very important study according to me. And this clearly said that this brings in some genetic changes after CBT also. Further, CBT and social anxiety disorder. That means, what are the changes which occurs post-CBT in social anxiety disorder patients? And the study clearly said that neuronal plasticity in response to cognitive behavioral therapy for social anxiety disorder was established. They found that diminished amygdala gray matter value on neuroimaging after CBT treatment. And this also clearly said that CBT not only affecting in depression, but also in social anxiety disorders, they found neuronal plasticity. Further, they compared CBT and SSRI, that is specifically citalopram, produced reduction in amygdala activation during anxiogenic public speaking in patient with social anxiety disorder. That means not only medication, but also CBT reduces the activation of amygdala. That means both are bringing similar changes. That means the medication is considered as a biological basis. Now, CBT also has to be considered as a biological basis of treatment. Further, CBT and OCD, this is well studied in across various, various by the researchers. To explore the effect of CBT on the whole brain white matter, they scanned 34 OCD patients who are drug nave before and after 12 weeks of CBT. And they also had a 50 healthy scanned control. And here they found that CBT responder showed prominently higher global and nodal clustering of left lingual gyrus and left fusiform gyrus was noted. This was a very important study. Further, fMRI in OCD patients. A study examined MRI in pre to post CBT in 43 OCD patients randomized to receive 4 weeks of intensive CBT or else weigh 4 weeks of wait list. And they also had 24 healthy controls. In this again, the results clearly indicated that there was increased OCD connectivity between the cerebellum and caudate and putamen, cerebellum and dorsolateral or ventrolateral prefrontal cortex. That means studies are clearly indicating there are changes occurring in the brain post CBT. Further, CBT and trauma. These are the studies. There are many studies which said that trauma faced Trauma-focused CBT plays a major role in patients who are suffering from PTSD, maybe adjustment disorder and various other stress-induced disorders. What does those studies say about fMRI changes after trauma-focused CBT? They found that increase in connectivity between bilateral superior medial, medial frontal gyrus and right temporal lobe and decrease in connectivity between left cuneus and left temporal pole. That means even in trauma, the CBT brings in changes in the brain. Now moving to CBT and migraine, whether the cognitive behavioral therapy has been found to be effective in migraine, it decreases the, the number of migraine attacks and also the pain. Here, 18 adolescents with migraine completed 8 weekly CBT sessions before the first and after final CBT, the MRI was done. 
and here they went under with structural and resting state blood oxygen level dependent contrast MRI scan was done. After CBT, they found that greater brain activation in the frontal region was noted. In addition, after CBT, increased connectivity between the amygdala and frontal region was also noted. That means even in migraine, if CBT is done, the brain changes are noted. Coming to CBT and inflammatory changes. As you know, depression is associated with deregulation in, of human system. That means in depression, there is inflammatory changes are noted. And one of the important study which looked at the translocator protein is elevated in major depression, indicating neuroinflammation, whether pre and post CBT, whether the changes occurs or not. And again, the study clearly said that translocator protein binding a marker of microglia is reduced in major depression after CBT. That means here also you can see genetic expression and neuronal plasticity, which is one of the landmark study. And also they found that depression is associated with deregulation immune system. And post CBT, they found that serum level of interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha decreased significantly in patient who received CBT. That means changes are occurring across the brain and also in the body. CBT induced effect on cells, proteins and enzymes are remarkable. Inflammatory cytokines, markers of oxidative stress, Telomere biology indicates the notion that CBT not only ameliorates psychiatric symptoms but also reduces the expression of inflammatory cytokines and improves cellular protection. That means it clearly again indicates CBT has biological basis. CBT is considered as a environmental influences. That means if you bring in changes in the environment, that means by doing CBT, you are bringing in different changes, not only in the environment, the way they process the environment and that brings in biological changes in the brain. And one of the other important was comparing CBT with other treatment modalities. Another important study, meta-analysis was done, comparing electroconvulsive therapy, antidepressant and CBT. Here, again, they try to compare the gray matter volume in depressed patient. And here the study clearly said that the strongest evidence for brain structural changes was noted for ECT first and then for antidepressant and further for CBT. But however, they clearly said that comparing studies was very difficult. But CBT brought in changes in the brain. And one more important study was comparing SSRI versus cognitive behavioral therapy in various patients seek, seeking treatment for depression or anxiety disorder. A 50, 55 patients seeking treatment for depression and anxiety were randomized to 12-week CBT or else 12-week of SSRI and MRI was done on them. Result clearly showed that both SSRI and CBT produced similar changes. That is, attenuation of insula and amygdala activity was noted. Again, it is a remarkable finding. Further, CBT versus SSRI in OCD patient. A study using PET and methyl l tryptophan tracer examined the changes in brain regional serotonin synthesis capacity in 16 OCD patients were randomly assigned either for CBT or sertraline treatment. Irrespective of treatment modality, the baseline serotonin synthesis capacity in the dorsal raphe nuclei changed in both the treatment aspect. That means it did not differentiate between CBT or medication. And also further predictor of responses whether CBT has to be given or else CBT and medication to be given or medication only has to be given. In patients with social anxiety disorder who had high pretreatment activity in dorsal anterior cingulate cortex were more likely to respond to combined SSRI and CBT than CBT monotherapy alone. Whereas patients with low pretreatment activity in this brain region were more likely to respond to monotherapy. That means here it also said that by doing neuroimaging studies, you can predict whether CBT has to be given alone or else CBT with medication or medication alone can be given. To conclude, my dear friends, recent research indicates that CBT can produce long-term effect and also changes in the brain. And these changes are neurobiological changes. Changes such as neuronal plasticity, and also neuronal receptor changes, dendritic plasticity, and also axon plasticity are seen. Further, 
it also said genetic expression also occurs. Further, even neuroinflammatory changes also do occur. And these changes are non-specific at this point of time. As we study more and more in a systematic way, we will be able to pinpoint what are the changes. But however, till date, the studies are very clear. Cognitive behavioral therapy brings in neuronal plasticity. And CBT is able to modify the dysfunctional neural circuit has been proved. CBT is like changing the environment. Basically, you are not changing the environment. You are changing the interpretation of the event in the environment. By that, the animal is able to bring in genetic modification, neuronal plasticity within the internal environment. That is, epigenetic changes are noted after CBT. That means, my dear friends, Medication is not only the biological basis, even CBT has biological basis of treatment. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.